Happy holidays, folks. We are back here with Erica Brown, the publisher and editor of The Cricket, coming to us from her office in downtown Manchester by the Sea. Beautifully adorned office in Manchester <laughs> by the Sea. You love giving me crap about that. I do. I do. Look at this. If I've you gone look, over the top. I'm going to design a special background that the next time we talk, it's going to be as festive as festive can be. Yeah. And I'm going to be wearing like hats and all sorts of things just to just to know you, you won't be able to say bah humbug yeah i don't want you to have like a, a dozen just kissing balls you're just trying to wrangle as you as you talk to me <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be juggling them well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so erica obviously uh we're wrapping up uh, uh, 2022 there's a lot going on we understand there's a lot to unpack with uh, the recent uh, activity with the planning board yeah i know it seems like we're always talking about the planning board although mm -hmm. we haven't talked about the planning board in a while um but yes uh planning board we had um gary gilbert uh resigned from the planning board did i tell you that no no yeah, he resigned a couple weeks ago sent in his resignation so they're down one on the planning board and it kind of fit in for this week planning board um community preservation um group um committee i mean cpc uh the manchester affordable housing trust uh, the water task force, all these things are sort of, and the, the select board, they're all kind of pushing towards the end of the year. And the planning board last week was like no different. They didn't even make it through their agenda, the full agenda, because they were down two people. Mary Foley was out sick and there's no Gary Gilbert, but they still got through a huge amount of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, one thing was, I would say is big, the two marinas, Manchester Marina and Manchester Marine and Crocker's Boatyard, they both had submitted expansion, float expansion plans quite a while ago. And they've been, you know, going before these other boards to get, you know, sign off on them or at least get them to not endorse them, but to be okay with them. Conservation Commission, um, the select board, you know, people like that. The Harbor Advisory Committee was something that the planning board definitely wanted to see them endorse. And then uh, the other thing that the planning board wanted is they wanted Harbor Master Pike, Bion Pike to really weigh in. So it all came to a head last week and they both got their special permits to expand. And this is a pretty significant expansion for these two properties. In the case of Crockers, they're expanding because they're going to expand their rent slips. Now, re remember the mooring list in Manchester is like 24 years long. I mean, it, it, literally, it's like a 20, 20 year wait for you to get a mooring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, sign up in utero, folks. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and you might be good by the time you're on your second job. <laughs> um, so there is sort of this incredible demand for slips and so, or, or spaces for your boat. So, you know, that's what Crocker's is gonna use it for, which is really necessary and needed. Um, it's not going to impinge on moorings, by the way, and that was very clear. Um, so it's not going to take away any moorings. It's only going to add space. And then for Manchester Marine, they wanted it for operational expansion. They wanted to be able to op expand their operational needs, and they, they were looking for that. So in any case, it went through fine. They're going to be doing these sort of public, um, there's like a public good, uh, they call it um, uh, public benefit. They needed some public benefit concessions. Um, and, you know, this is kind of interesting. Uh, Skip Crocker allows commercial lobstermen to um, use the docks during the off season. He's going to continue that. So it's not really, it's a concession that was already baked in. Another concession that was already baked in is that Skip Crocker uh, uses his tugboat, and I did not know this until last week, uh, in the off season to chip away the ice to access Morse Pier also for the commercial lobstermen. He'll continue to do that, which is really awesome. Mm -hmm. And then Manchester Marine and Crockers um, agreed with, um, you know, Bayon asked them to put up signage for kayakers and, and paddle boarders, and they're going to do that uh, to stay away from the channel, which is, uh, you know, dangerous. Mm. So they're going to do that. So that's the public benefit. It went through fine. Um, it went through 5-0. So it was a unanimous vote, which it needed to be because they needed a super majority. That's why I brought up Gary Gilbert. Yeah. Um, so they needed all five to vote. Well, Christine Delisio said she was not going to vote for it. And she was one member who she was concerned about um, a harbor master plan that she wanted to see completed before any expansion to the marina could happen. So she was sort of presenting herself as being the the, the Joe Manchin of the group. <laughs> He's, she's going to stop everything. And the truth is, the idea of a harbor master plan, we talked about this a while, that's like a brand new idea. It's And it takes two, up to two years to create. So for her to bring this up, in the 11th hour of this these these applications was quite a stone in 
in the shoe of this process, right? So, um, you know, uh, you know, they, everybody sort of in unison kind of responded. You had J Becky Jakes from the uh, select board. She's the chair of the select board. She stood up and she said, listen, we're not going to be able to do this anytime soon. We're going to address it. We're inclined to do it um, and it will be done, but it, the timing doesn't work. And Christine said, well, you could make it really easy. You could just bring it to town meeting and um, don't go for grants. Just we'll just pay for it um, out of an allotment out of town meeting, which you know, most people said, you know, $120,000 incremental for an incremental project, they're going to go for grant funding for that. They're not going to want taxpayers to pay for that. So listen, and then Bayon got up and he said, listen, there's a lot of value to these plans right now. Um, and so in the end, she acquiesced, but there you go. So that happened. Um, there was also a big parking study. So that has a lot of impact for downtown businesses. The downtown improvement committee had, has been uh, leading this charge. Um, it's one of many vexing issues that downtown businesses sort of face uh, public bathrooms and parking. Those are the two biggies, right? And this parking study is being done by the Metropolitan Area um, uh, Planning Council, MAPC. And um, they did a couple of um, surveys. They've, it was very comprehensive and they gave a little preview of it. And it was really interesting. We found that parking isn't really as much of a problem as we thought, but there's little areas in parking for downtown that if we solve those two areas could really free up things. And one of them is employee parking. So we find that a lot of employees for downtown businesses, they wanna park close to things. So if we're able to solve that problem and get people to park there, that's a good thing. And then number two, residents, downtown residents, um, who, especially people in apartments that don't have parking spots that are easy to get to, they use the downtown parking. And if we can find a solution for them, I think it's going to be good. So that was actually very encouraging, but it was a lot of work and it was a big deal. So it that needs like an I4C2 lot, it sounds like. Yeah. What's an ICC42 lot? That's that big lot down in Gloucester's waterfront that people just park in. Oh my God. I love that lot. The dirt right. lot. It's like right next to blue collar lobster. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we that's what we need until until of course that gets developed into something, which it probably will <laughs> over time because it's too nice of a lot. It reminds me of those lots in Boston where some of the best parking lots were like waterfront lots in the yeah, North End. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so um so yes, yeah, so that's that's gonna that's gonna work out. Um so that was interesting. And then there's there's just so much stuff. Um, I, and I, on the next couple of weeks, I, I think they're going to be addressing some serious things beyond the planning boards. Just a lot of stuff. And I imagine next spring's town meeting is going to be a doozy too. It's going to be a doozy. Uh, because remember the last, the special town meeting last month um, kind of got cut short. It was supposed to, they thought it might be two nights. They had a ton of stuff with recodification. They only got halfway through it because they had this uh, issue with the electronic voting didn't work. And then also people were confused about the recodification. Planning board mentioned those too. They've carved out, they're going to carve out four of the outstanding, I believe there are eight articles that still have to get taken through. Uh, they had 12, they got through five. So anyway, that's, they're going to chunk it out. They're going to make it basically, you know, chewable and cherry flavored for the uh, voters. And they're going to just chunk out maybe four at a time. And they'll finalize what those are in January because they have to really have them on the warrant no later than March. And they have to have a public hearing about them. So um, January, they're going to know what they're going to do. And they're chunking it out because there's so much other stuff that's going to be happening at the annual town meeting, you know, besides budgets and all that stuff that happens at an annual town meeting. Right. Okay, so you want to meet back here same time next week? Yeah, next week I should have some stuff that's going on with the CPC and all the projects that they're going to work on. And then the Affordable Housing Trust is going through some serious issues too. They had a big meeting, they had a big meeting last week, and that's going to start to kind of flush through as they go through next year too. Okay. A lot of stuff. <laughs> well, we'll let you uh, get out and get start getting some decorations in just in time for the holiday <laughs> season, Erica. <laughs> Susan's <laughs> laughing. She's like, <laughs> yeah. start with the eggnog, and then everything else will fall into place. <laughs> All righty. Bye for now. Interested in a sponsorship? Email sponsor at 1623studios.org to learn more.